This is Lawrence Sherman from the Global Fertility Academy. Recently, in Lisbon, Portugal, during the 31st annual ESHRAE meeting, I sat down with some of the world's top thought leaders and discussed the challenges and opportunities faced in fertility today. Join me for this very exciting interview. Dr. Baidu, thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much. We were talking a little bit before. Uh, let, let's talk a little bit more about what the status of ART and IVF and fertility in general is in India. Fertility, if you see the population wise, you know, uh, definitely 15 to 20 percentage of uh, population has to have uh, infertil infertility problem. So if you take the number, the population number, it is the total amount of uh, uh, people who need uh, fertility assistance and treatment care, that's much, much higher compared to any other country. So that is the biggest problem and the biggest advantage as a clinician what uh, in, the, in the practice you will face. So the thing is, uh, uh, the most important thing is, uh, previously it was two things were important. One was the affordability of the people because it's a developing country, low socioeconomic uh, strata of the people. And the second thing was the availability of the treatment. That is the biggest problem we were challenging. Then over the period of time, now it has improved quite a lot. Now quite a lot of referral centers has come. Then uh, the awareness of the people, the education, the, uh, uh, the need for fertility treatment have increased. So that is the good thing about it. And, and where do you see it going in the next five years? I think in the next five years, it's, uh, the fertility services are going to improve because quite a lot of centers are coming up in India in different places. E even if you take a second tier or third tier cities, it is available now. IVF treatment and fertility, the apex uh, fertility care and the treatment is available in India. Are there levels of quality and are there places that uh, people go because they have the higher quality reputation certification? Yeah, definitely. Uh, there are places, where, but as the number increases, uh, we should focus it focus on the quality. Quality should not compromise. But de definitely, there are certain referral centers. Those who believe in the quality, those who believe in the accreditation, those who believe in uh, recording and the pro proper uh, channelizing the treatment, that definitely they have got an advantage over the other centers. And. Uh where do you see the status of embryology and embryologists and their training and certification today? Yeah, that is one part definitely we are lacking. Uh, I think till date uh, we haven't have any, uh, in India we haven't uh, have any uh, kind of uh, certified training process for embryologists. But if you take uh, uh, the clinician part, now we have got fellowship, two to three years of fellowship and training. I am one person who trained in, especially in reproductive medicine and I, my training was almost for three years and now the government has started the super speciality DM training in the uh, health sector also that is also there but definitely the proper structured curriculum for embryologists is still lacking. So how does that correlate with the availability and success of some of the newer technologies and techniques? Yeah, definitely that gets compromised. When you get less number of trained persons, when you get less number of uh, quality person, in, especially in the field of embryology, because it's, mo it's the most important. Lab part is also as important as the clinician's part. So definitely the number of embryologists, are uh, it's not adequate. Now it's a, a demand, uh, it, they definitely we cannot meet the demand. Uh, for the embryology. That's why it's different in India. The practice of IVF is different in India, especially if in the second tier or third tier cities going for a batch IVF. Batch IVF in some way it is a compromise as per se if you take the IRT treatment it, it's a kind of compromise. So uh, th that, uh, that is the major issue we should uh, sort, sort out. Well, it sounds like, though, if we look at it a different way, it's really good opportunities for standardized education, training, things like that. Yeah, definitely, uh, especially for uh, the, those who uh, in the field of uh, assisted reproduction, whether he's a clinician, embryologist, or a paramedic, or a nurse, I think it's, it's a different entity. Definitely, we should uh, look forward, and we should have more facilities, and we should, have more, we should more focus on the proper structured training programs. I think the last thing I'd like to ask you is what I like to ask everybody. What do you think the most exciting things to come out of ESHRAE this year will be? Uh, 
Expo is always exciting because uh, last one year, if you come and attend one uh, Expo for one year, I think uh, you are updated in the field of assisted reproduction. You will get all the kind of recent papers, re recent research works, how the entire uh, gl globally how the trend is, where it is changing. So I think uh, the innovative techniques in uh, embryology and the field of uh, uh, cryo, uh, um, cryo, uh, uh, cryo protection and the field of uh, freezing programs, it, it's quite interesting. Now the entire world is moving for freeze all policies and all. It's quite interesting. Yes, no. Excellent, Dr. Baju. Thank you for taking the time to chat.